Thank you, choir. There's a lot of children there today. I want to say thank you for making 2016 a great year. Thank you, parents, for bringing the children. Uh, make a commitment this year to bring those children to church and come with them. Uh, young people, uh, the future of this church, you know, rest on what you're going to do uh, with your lives and bringing your kids up. If they don't come, uh, if you don't come, they probably don't get to come. And then one of these days, our church will die out because there's no young people. We need these young people. You are important in our church. And adults, you are important also. Uh, you what keep me young. And uh, I thank the Lord for this year. It's been a great year. Man, I'm glad it's over. I am glad it's over. What a year. You know, to many, it is the toughest year in your life. It was a, it was a tough year, you know. We've had uh, some uh, turmoil in people's lives, uh, sicknesses, heartaches, all kinds of things, deaths. Man, families have uh, hurt and you probably are thinking, I thought it would never end. Well, I got news for you. 2017 may have some turmoil in it. May have some sicknesses in it. May have some deaths. More than likely, we will. Every year, you know, I got up this morning and it all looked the same. 2016 was gone and 17 looked just like it. It was dark when I got up. I thought, man, you know, surely the sun's going to rise in a little bit. And it did. Beautiful day, but I couldn't tell uh, any difference. You know, this past year was kind of like getting into HOV lane. You can just go down that lane and you get to traveling, but if you're not careful, you won't be getting off to where you want to get off at. And that first time I traveled that into Dallas, I, I went about five miles before past where I wanted to get off because I couldn't get off. And I thought, well, this is silly. You know, if I'd have been right over there, those people were traveling just as fast and they got off where they wanted to. So, you know, sometimes we rush along thinking we're going somewhere and we're not getting there very quick. Well, it's over. 16 is gone. Now, we face 2017. What's going to be different about 2017? I don't know if you keep up with our church or not. I hope you do. I hope you're interested in what's going on at this church, how the Lord is moving and doing things. Uh, uh, we try to have things here that will interest you and interest your children. And we got just a great group working with the youth and the children and the adults. I'm surprised, you know, these pews are just not full. But you know, in our day society, people want to go to church to be entertained. And so many times we don't just entertain, we preach the word, we teach the word. And I, I want you to make a commitment if you're here today. Lord, I, I'll make a commitment that I will be here, I will bring my children, I'll bring my uh, family. I will be here at this church and work hard to make 2017 one of the greatest years in baptisms. I want to see the baptisms up in our church. I want to see the mission offerings up in our church. I want to see our church grow in Sunday school and instead of decline. Don't you want to do that? You see, it's your church. It's God's church. And you have a, a part in that. Don't you want to honor God with all your life this year? 2017, we've got a pretty good sized budget. We voted on it back in October. And, you know, some said, well, I don't see how we're going to make it. Well, we're not going to make it if we don't tithe. If we don't give according to what God has blessed us with. You can be a part of that. 
Matter of fact, I expect you to be a part of it. I expect us to give our tithe, which is 10%, and then I expect you to pray about what you can give over that to make it. You see, we're going to be at least $90,000 short if we don't give a little bit more. And back then in October, we prayed and asked people to give at least 5 to $10 more a week. That's just about maybe three soft drinks you can give up to get that $5. And sometimes we can give up more than that. But we work at it together for God's glory. Now, I'm excited about it. And I believe it'll be a great year if we'll do some things. One of my favorite passages of Scripture is Hebrews chapter 12. Turn with me in the Bible to Hebrews chapter 12. It may be in your bulletin. I don't know if you look at the bulletin or not. Evidently, Brother Teddy doesn't because you would know that no canned chili is allowed. <laughs> no canned chili. No roadkill. We're not going to have none of that this year. In the past, yes, you ate pretty good. But no roadkill this year, all right? We're going to have a great time. We're going to have at least two extinguished judges. You can figure that now. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Listen to what it says. Therefore, pointing back up to chapter 11, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of, of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us another day, another uh, opportunity to come and hear the word and respond to it. Lord, if there's someone here today that has never given their life to you, Lord, may today be that day that they say yes to you I want to start my life living for Christ today. What a great way to start off a new year. And Lord, may we commit ourselves, we as those who have trusted in you, may we commit ourselves to see your church grow, to see your church witness, to see your church start missions all over the world. And God will give you the praise and honor, for it's in your precious name, the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Okay, we face 2017. It's just started, but we can make it the best year ever if we look at this passage of Scripture and think about what it's saying. Faith, these people in chapter 11... Live by faith. They all died, it says in verse 13 of chapter 11, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Did you know we are just like these? We can claim the words of God. We can, by faith, live our lives for God. We can claim the promises of God. I don't know about you, but I've been claiming the promises of God for years. And God has always been faithful to bless our life. Oh, I tell you what, God is so good. I cannot uh, even start to tell you how great our God is. Boy, when the choir sings, oh, what a Savior. Man, made the hairs come up on the back of my neck. For we serve a mighty Mighty God. And did you know, if I want to make this the best year of my life, all I have to do is live one 
day at a time. You see, this is the only moment that you and I have. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Right now is the very present. Right now is the day. Jesus says today is the day of salvation. Man, the day is the only time in life that we have. Time cannot be saved. We must savor every moment that God gives us. When you get up in the morning, you ought to thank God for that moment that you have, that life that he's given you. Every uh, Christmas in our family, we do some things. We, we're getting to celebrate Christmas uh, early this year with my mother because, you know, she's getting on up in the years and she's beginning to lose her mind and she's beginning uh, to not be able to do some things and we get together and every year we try to take a family group picture with all our children, with all our uh, grandchildren. But you know what from year to year happens? From year to year, some of the pictures are changing. You see, some of the group is not there anymore. Some of our friends and some of our loved ones have gone on to glory. Some have died. Yet there's some new ones in the pictures. In our family, we're uh, in, our, in our Jones family, I have nephews that they're having children. I got the word the other day that Terry's daughter, most of y'all know Terry, that uh, have gone around with me very long. One of the twin boys, his little girl, little girl I say, she's 24, 25 now, but she's having another baby this year. Oh man, it's going to be exciting because in that uh, picture, there's going to be a, a new face there. Some young men are getting married and they have wives there that uh, now that's a new face in our, our family. You see, some have been taken away. Death comes to all our families. And yet some have been added to our families. But right now is the only time and we must live today as the day that God has given us. The psalmist wrote, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So if you're going to live 2017 till the fullest, you must live right now the moments that God has given you today. You know, I can't worry about yesterday. It's gone. It's not going to come back. And then I want you to know something else. If you're going to be happy in 2017, you must savor the present right now. Enjoy the present that God has given you. See, we got to forget the past. We cannot live our lives holding on to yesterdays. You know, it's amazing to me. Some people, they come to me and they say, Preacher, you know, I just, last year was so bad and did this and that. Let it go. Last year's past. Those sins that drag you down, let them go. Jesus says in the word, confess it and forget it. You see, Jesus will forgive you of those past sins. If I worried about all my past sins, man, I couldn't come in those doors and preach on Sunday morning. Those past sins are gone. They've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. But yet we weigh our lives down with those past things. And listen, you can't be happy if you're going to hold on to the past sins in your life. Lay those down. Get rid of them. God says, let them go. You see, so many of us are dragging the past with us. And Jesus says, no, bring your burdens to me and leave them there. Take them to the cross. Confess your sin. He will forgive. And then start off afresh with the day that God has given you. And live every moment for Jesus Christ. You see, 
Some live their life always anticipating uh, what they're going to do in the future. Well, we got to forget the past. And you can't live in the future. People will say to me, said, one of these days, preacher. Let me tell you something. One of these days, never get there. I've had people say, well, I'm going to start going to church one of these days. Well, they died. And they never went to church. And now it's too late for them. You see, they're wishing they would have lived in the present. When Jesus says today is the day of salvation, now is the accepted time. He means right now is the accepted time. It's the only time. You can't live in the past. You can't live in the future. You must live in the present if you're going to enjoy life. Enjoy the moment that God has given you. I don't know about you, but I'm just so excited that uh, I have today. I'm praising God today right here in this church. I can't think of a better place than I'd rather be than right here in the home church preaching the Word of God on Sunday morning. You know, I don't expect to ever win uh, fame and fortune out there. I, if I did, that'd be all right. But I don't expect that. I don't ever expect my names to be in the lights out there on the front of the building. You know, I just live one day at a time. Our lives can be enjoyed if we love the simple things of life. Think about it. Most of you, you're not going to have those big highlights, but you're going to have the simple things in life. And you know what? I enjoy the simple things. I was out the other night. Somebody said, what did you do? I said, well, I walked around out in the dark at about 12 o'clock. And I was looking up at the stars, and I said, Lord, have you all ever noticed that big star or planet? It is bright. And you know what? I see it right here, and it's just right there. But you know what? Down at Reclaw, it's right there too. I can't figure that out yet. But I'm going to enjoy the simple things. You know, that is so easy to just walk out and look up and say, thank you, Lord, for the beautiful stars that you put in the sky. That's a simple thing. Oh, something else I like, a wonderful meal. That's just a simple thing, but you know what? People all over the world don't enjoy that. They don't have that. And if you was able to sit down with your family this Thanksgiving or this Christmas, enjoy a meal together. Thank God for that. That is a blessing that a lot of the world does not have. And if you were able to sit down with that meal with a, a loved one that you love and your family, well, you ought to be praising God for that. You can't buy that with money. Amen. You can enjoy those things if you don't enjoy just the simple pleasures in life. You know what else? I, I enjoy hunting. Most of y'all know that. If you don't, I do. I got two bucks this year. I'm going to brag a little bit. And that's not $2. Some of you that don't hunt think, well, you got $2 and he's happy about it? No, I got two nice bucks this year. And you know, that's a good year. I enjoy that simple thing. You know, oh, what a moment to enjoy. You know what? Next year I might get a hole in one. I'm going to enjoy that too. But that's just a simple thing. Probably won't happen. But you know, if it does, it does. But whatever, I'm going to enjoy every moment that God has given me. You know, you've got to be happy in the things of life. Listen, the very simple things that God has blessed you with is a lot more than a, the majority of this world has. If you were born in America and you have a, a nice home and you have shoes to wear and you have clothes to put on, you're better off than most of the people in the world. Man, you go over to some of these third world countries and you'll be proud to get back out of here. You'll be proud. I don't care what you're doing. You know, 
It don't matter what you're doing as long as you're happy in the Lord. And we need to look back, yes, and just praise God for the small things. Hold on to them. Lay aside those things that beset us. Lay aside those sins and run the race that God has given you. And I believe God has a job for you right here in this church. Second thing I want you to know, learn to serve. Learn to serve. Oh, let me say that again. Learn to serve, folks. You know, remember what Jesus did in the upper room? When Jesus was in the upper room, he took a towel and a basin of water, and he went around and started washing his disciples' feet. He was being an example for them. They thought, oh, Lord, you don't need to wash my feet. And he said, listen, I do need to wash your feet. And you need to wash the feet of others. Folks, let me tell you something. We need to take on the role of a servant. You see? A role of a servant. He said, happy are ye if you do them. Serve one another. You know what? I heard someone say just a, a little while back, the happy things in life are when I'm able to do something for someone else and they don't even know it. You know, that's a blessing from God. Your servant. I tell you what, we have some great servants in this church. I'm not going to call their names, but man, I tell you what, I just enjoy seeing some of our guys. They're up here opening the church up. They're turning on the air conditions. They're turning them off. Man, I tell you what, we got some good servants here in this church, and we've got some that don't want to do nothing but complain. And you know what? They're not happy. <laughs> They're not happy. They come to church and say, well, preacher, you know, if this was this, this, and I'm going to say, what? Maybe you ought to get happy. Maybe you ought to try to turn in them on a little bit. Maybe you ought to stay late and turn them off. See if that makes you happy. You know? Serve, God says. Most of the time, all we want is to serve ourselves. And when we serve ourselves, we're not happy. Because you won't find true happiness unless you're doing what Jesus said, serving other people. I think about all these people of faith. You know, they weren't perfect. You look at those names and man, you say, how in the world with the sins that he had did he make it in there? Because he loved God. And the Bible says he trusted God. And the Bible says he believed the promises of God. You know, that's what we need to do. Start trusting God, believing the promises of God, and start serving one another. One day at a time, remember that, one day at a time live life for God. It's too hard if we try to live it all week in just one day. Just one moment at a time, serving somebody else. You know what? Try doing it sometimes. It's been done to me so much, I, I've started doing it to everybody else. And I've enjoyed it. Don't tell anybody. Just buy somebody's lunch that you don't even know. Just tell the waitress. See, you see that people over there? I'm going to buy their lunch. You know, I had a woman say, you're buying their lunch? I said, yeah. You know, you know who they are? I said, I don't have a clue. She said, why are you buying their lunch? I said, because God told me to. And that's all the, you know, just pass it on. I was going through the line. I don't know who did it. One of y'all maybe bought my breakfast one morning. I don't know. But when I went by the window, she said, yours taken care of. And I thought, I didn't pay nothing. It was done by somebody up in front of me. And I said, well. I thank the Lord for them. Let me buy the people next behind me. <laughs> Do something for somebody. It'll make you happier. You see? It doesn't have to be a whole lot. It could be just a simple thing. Try doing something for somebody else. It'll make a, it makes a different person out of you. It really will. You see, life is good and life is happy. 
when we learn to serve others. Next thing I want you to notice is you've got to forgive and forget. Have you ever noticed today we're living in a society that's getting more and more violent all the time? Every day I see things on the television. Man, the news is bad news most of the time. How can a father kill his wife by cutting her throat and a little child? I do not understand. But yet we see more and more of that happening every single day. Someone says, I hope I have a, a good memory when I get old. And, you know, I hope I do have a good memory when I get old. But, you know, I hope I have a good forgetter. Think about it. I want to have a good forgetter. Paul says you've got to forget those things that are behind and reach forward to the things that are ahead. And he says, I press on towards the mark of the high calling of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I believe those things that we need to forget are the hurts. I've been hurt so many times with so many people in our congregation that if I didn't forgive them, I never could preach. That's just part of life. That's part of being a pastor, I, I guess. You know, disappointments. I get so disappointed in people. We preach about love and then someone will be critical of someone else in our church, hurt their feelings and they're out of church. We work so hard to get people in here and you run them off sometimes by the hurtful things that you say. And I get so disappointed. I said, Lord, why do they have to say things like that? Why can't they just keep their mouth shut? But I still love you. I still love those people that get mad and do things that, that are hurtful. You have to if you're going to be happy. I made a promise with the Lord a while back. I said, Lord, I'm not going to let them run me off by the way they behave. You know what? Every preacher wants to quit every time on Monday morning, I think. But I'm not going to leave on Monday morning, I guarantee you, because Tuesday will be a whole lot different. You see, people say hurtful things on Monday and they apologize on Tuesday. We've got to lay those things behind us. Forget those things. Forget. And I said, Lord, I just hope i got a good forgetter. And I believe sometimes even if we forget, we've got to learn to enjoy the victor victories that we have in Christ. I saw a little boy come to Christ a few weeks back, Jack. You know, he's a little boy, and I, I, I went home and I thought, Lord, I thank you for that one soul that came to know Christ today. I expected the altar to be full, but only one little boy came. And I said, Lord, I thank you for that one. And I pray that the rest of us will get our lives right one day before it's too late. I can't love people if I don't learn to forgive others that hurt me. If you've got someone that's hurt your feelings, don't get mad at them. Forgive them. Just say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to go on and be what you want me to be. You can't hold on to those grudges and serve God too. It just does not work. You'll get bitter. Old devil, he's here. He's alive. He's a well. He wants to ruin your family. He wants to ruin your uh, service to God. Don't let him do that. Learn to forgive. Learn to serve. Live one day, one moment at a time. It's all that we have. You see? 
I know some people, they just like to hold on to past grudges and they won't forgive. And let me tell you something. If you're a past person that's like that, you're going to live a miserable life. <laughs> because if it's not someone here, it's going to be someone at your work. If it's not someone at your work, it's going to be somebody that you know. And you're always going to be miserable if you don't learn to forgive and forget. I have people all the time say, well, I'll forgive them, but I'm not going to forget it. No, you really haven't forgiven them. You know? Forgive means that you love them and you're going to serve them just like you would anybody else. Try that. Most people are so full of bitterness, they have no room for joy in their life. And bitterness kills you, folks. It will kill you. It will keep you out of church. It will keep you from enjoying the victory and the happiness and the joy that God wants. Forgive and forget. One day at a time, serve others, forgive and forget. And then the last thing, face adversity with courage. If you make it through life without any adversity, it'll be a miracle. It just doesn't happen, in other words. You're going to have some adversity in your life. And let me tell you something. It is never pleasant. It's never pleasant. But it's how we respond to it that makes your life, one way or the other, happy or sad. You see, adversity should strengthen your life. Think about it. The Christian life is laced with the grace of God, and it shines even as a light when you face adversity. Think about Job. Job was one man in the Bible who learned obedience to God through the sufferings and even though he didn't understand, he said, my obedience and faithfulness to God will stay true. He didn't understand. As I read it and study it, he never understood why this happened. But he said, I love these words that he said, even though my God slay me, I will serve him. Man, adversity. We face it every day. But by the grace of God, we will not let it defeat us. You see, I don't know what's going to happen. I've had families lose a loved one, they get mad at God, they drop out of church. They let adversity defeat them. They're still out of church. I've had families lose a loved one, lose a son, lose a daughter, and they continue to praise God through it, and they have become stronger in their Christian walk. And the last thing, if you're going to face 2017 with victory in your life, you've got to give your life to God. You've got to be his child. I don't know what your future holds, but like the song says, I know who holds the future. And if you will give your life to him, he will not disappoint you. He will be there for you. I couldn't walk down the road safely without knowing that Christ was my Savior and Lord. I just couldn't do it. I'd be afraid I'd have a wreck and die and end up in a place called hell. See, James says life is like a vapor. 
I was telling my wife the other day, I'm 64 now, believe it or not. I look young, don't I? Man, so physically fit. Y'all think that's funny? Sixty-four. Thirty-two years ago would be half of that, right? Thirty-two years ago I came here. Thirty-two years ago my brother died. I thought the other day, you know, he died half of my life ago. I still love him. I still think about him. But I press on home because I know he's there. One day, I, I was thinking the other day, driving down the road, if I died, I would see my father, I'd see my brother, little sister, my uncle, my grandma, my grandpa. And it just seemed like the other day they were here. That's been 32 years ago, half of my life. Man, when you look at that, life is like a vapor. <laughs> it's over just like that. I will turn around and I'll be in nursing home somewhere. Because life will be over just like that. You think you've got a long time? Think again. Let me encourage you. If you don't know Christ, would you give your life to him right now? Follow his will for your life? Because let me tell you, it'll be over before you know it. And today is the only day that you have. To this moment is the only moment you have. I had an uncle. He was a preacher. He preached his sermon, walked to the back door, and he fell dead. He thought he was going to preach that night. Brother Robert White. He thought he was going to preach that night. But he didn't. You know? Now, if you're not saved, I'm not trying to scare you. But I would if it's what it took to get you here and into heaven. But that's a reality, folks. We think we're going to have 2017. But let me tell you something. Tonight, if you look on the news, you'll see a lot of people that have already died in this new year. Your name could be there. If you're not saved, Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Boy, let me tell you something. That rest means joy. That rest means peace. That rest means a love that only he can give you. Not like the world gives, but only Christ. Put your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ and yield your life to him. Then you can really enjoy 2017. Lay aside the sins that ensnares us. They trap us. And let us run. You can't run the race if you don't get on it and start. It starts with you putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if you're here and you're already saved, forget the past. If somebody's hurt you, forget it. It's not worth holding on to. Let it go and let God do a work of grace in your heart. Say, Lord, I, I don't want to hold on to that anymore. I want to release it. I want to live 2017 to the very fullest. And enjoy it every moment. You see? You ask me why I'm happy? Because Jesus Christ is in my heart. I don't know of anybody here that I don't love. And there's not a one on our church road that I don't love. And there's not an old person walking up that street that I don't love in Christ Jesus. Oh, they're different. But you know what? All of us are different. We're to love them. Jesus would love them. He wouldn't love the sins 
Now that's where I differ from a lot of people. A lot of people say, well, we need to accept them on into the church, get them. No, the body of Christ is to remain pure. We're to love them and pray for them and teach them about the Lord so that they can come to salvation. Oh, what a joy it is to see people come to know Jesus Christ. That starts our year to be the best year ever in this church. Would you be obedient to God this year? That's all he asked you. These people were obedient. They saw the promises of God afar off, and they were assured and embraced them. That means they were obedient to them and confessed that they were strangers. We're just strangers here. We're passing through. Life will be over. I, I think of that little poem, and I, I tried to think of it going down the highway. You know, I asked God for a good forgetter, and he did. He let me forget just about everything. <laughs> Life on earth will soon be past. Only what's done for Christ will last. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today that we can come to this time of decision. And Lord, if there's people here, and I know they are, Lord, that never trusted you as Lord and Savior, today, would you let them come to know you, repent of their sin, and turn to you? Lord, there's those here that need to live one day at a time, quit living in the past, and start serving you right here in the present. There's those that need to forget past hurts and past disappointments and past failures and start living life to the fullest. Right now is a great time to start off this new year. Lord, let us see that in our heart. And Lord, if there's someone here that needs to come to you, may they come to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen.